Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today is another day on the Montana farm and it's just early right now, so I'm not in the combine yet. My dad's out with Trevor, teaching him a little bit more and we've got the third combine here today, although the air conditioning isn't fixed. So we'll probably only run it until it gets too hot and the grain cart's also here. So I'll keep you updated on the happenings of today. Yikes. What do you mean, broke the window out of the trailer? Oh, oh, okay. Now Trevor's shutting his door of his combine. Just match my speed. What are you up to right now, Dad? We're about to go combining all three combines now. Cornell team showed up so we can get harvest. <laughs> yes, the Cornell Bee Club, basically. Yeah. So now I'm in the combine. I've just started it up and my dad's going to get in his combine right here and then Trevor's going to run his, which is the furthest one. We've got our grain cart driver over here. Okay, you can hear me, Kate? Yes, I have a copy. Okay, we'll put on out there, Kate, but we're gonna just let these run a minute or two to warm up before we start loading them up. Okay, sounds good. So my dad's going to go first, and then I'll go, and then Trevor will follow. Although Trevor has the biggest grain tank. Yeah, we'll go out and find our short road, you know, and just line up. Let me go about a uh, hundred yards or so, and then the next person start the next. So when we go to dump, he can dump me, and you guys aren't so maxed out, totally full, that he has time to get to you and dump you. We're just staggering when the combines start, kind of like a race, so that the grain cart can unload one and then the next and the next seamlessly and we're not all full at the same time, so we can keep the operation moving smoothly. I'm still in turtle speed because my combine takes a little while to warm up. It's important for these big machines that you don't just hop right in them and start harvesting. There is a weird noise going on with my combine, not right now, but when the header is running and it's not going through wheat. So we're wondering if it's going to have a breakdown this year. I'm really hoping not, but it's definitely a likely scenario. Dad, I think this row right that I'm right next to is facing my way. You need to come down next to me and leave that one for Trevor. Oh, I see what you're doing. Sorry. Now my dad's starting in the wheat swap. Give me a little, a little ways, Kate, so, you know, we, we don't. The car guy can get done with me and drive straight over to you. You know what I mean? Okay, sounds good. So once my dad gets far enough, I'll turn my machine on, which I'm doing right now. I'm full of fuel and everything seems to be working properly right now. I hear a bunch of almost wheat kernels, it sounds like, in my header here going shh, shh, shh. So I'm wondering if this is the same issue I had last year. It's always hard to tell if these noises are what you're supposed to hear in the combines or not because the combines generally make quite a lot of noise, so I always second guess myself a million times before deciding if anything's wrong. Now Trevor started combining as well. So we've got our whole crew going. I'm going to stop at the end of my pass here because I feel like I hear an unusual noise. So we're just going to check my the front of my combine to see if it's all good because I did have an issue last year with the feeder house, but it's probably okay now. Not totally sure. So my dad's just getting out of his combine there. Now I shut the machine off, or the, the header. So my dad said I just have to let it go for now. I laid my header on the ground so he could check it out. Now my dad's going to turn around and start his next pass. Now we'll all be taking our passes, heading back up. It is making that weird noise when there's not any wheat going through it, so I'm sure something's going on, but it's just a matter of when we find out. Now we're on our pass headed south, and I guess my Uncle Chris swapped all of the fields back and forth, because it's not the most pleasant thing to no, swap I'm across the furrow. closer to the end, you know, so I'm fuller, but Darcy's truck is probably not going to hold all three dumps, because I already got a dump in them, so... Go ahead another, leave me a couple minutes worth of cut time from the end of the field. That's how long it takes me to dump, you know? So you can, you, you can put along if you want. Don't get behind me though, so you don't get in the dust. So my dad's explaining to Lucas, our cart driver, that he 
he's going to get some practice by dumping on the go with my dad. But if he doesn't feel comfortable, he can do stops with us. Um, I'll try a dump on the go with him. Okay, I'm going to put out my augers. You just hang out and then come dumping. Go ahead and start drifting in towards my row. Keep going. Line up, you know, the front end on that inside tire track. Right there, in front of you. Slow down for me. Wait for me now so I can catch up. Now once my dad finishes unloading, I'm going to put my auger out. Okay, now zoom around and go get the other guys. Faster, oh my goodness. It's going pretty slow, so I don't know if he'll make it by the time I'm at the end of the row here. So Lucas is just lining the grain cart up with my auger right now. We'll probably be at the, the end of the row before he gets here, but we'll see. We can always do a little dump on the go and then stop. Did you stop there or we can, you can keep going unless you don't feel comfortable. Maybe if you could even the cart out a little bit. Trevor, the third dump is kind of complicated. You might want to, you know, have them stop for yours because you'll have to move around to fill the cart. Okay, just, just, yeah, you can stop now. I still have a fair amount of space on my combine for more grain. I'm not at the windows yet. That's okay, we have to dump uh, headed this direction because when you get in there, your next pass, he's, he's going to have weight he can't drive on to dump you. And if you get full, then you have to stop up, stop back up, and move your combine over to one side so he can get in without driving on the wheat. You'll see me do it eventually, but I haven't had to do it yet. Next time, if you want to do a stop, um, unload Lucas, you can just let me know so I don't get... I don't understand what's happening. Lucas is definitely struggling a little bit on cart, but he's figuring it out, so that's what's important. Now I'm picking my header up and going to my next pass. So now I'm set in my new pass. I just ran something through the combine. I didn't know what it was, and you're really not supposed to run anything through the combine, but it didn't look that big, but I think I maybe should have stopped. I'm not totally sure. Now the grain cart's going to the truck to dump. So the whole process is, first the wheat is swathed by what's called a swather and it's laid down into rows. That's very specific to our process and our area because we have a little bug called sawfly which buries into the stem of the wheat and it lays eggs. So once it does that, the wheat falls over and we can't pick it up with the big combine headers that just cut it immediately. And the rows over here are facing the right direction. I don't think. No, you're, uh, what, somebody's going to have to road down to this end and take one of them back up. You're going you're gonna to have to get away and turn around again and come back again. Darcy's talking to the green car driver. Down there and then do the, the rest with you guys. Way back. Yeah, you can just speed down here and grab one of these going back. Pile. Shut it down and shut it off and come around again. You're just going to get away from the trailer then so you aren't rubbing against it. Looks like the grain cart's having a little bit of problems with the truck because that's Darcy on the radio. And then Trevor just realized that there's no more rows headed this direction. So he's gonna have to road the combine to the other end and take one of the rows back up headed um, south with us. So I'm driving about a 15, 16 foot pickup header right now. So that would be the next process after swapping is to pick it up in the combines. And then the combines empty their grain tank into the grain cart that you've seen multiple times in the field and then the grain cart will empty itself into the truck and then from the truck it gets emptied into the grain bin or delivered to an elevator. Trevor's driving by me right now to take one of these rows back up and my dad's already on his pass headed, headed up as well. So that means we're just about finished with this field. Oh, Lucas thinks he broke something on the grain cart. I'm just gonna let some air out of my seat right now. That might not be. Yeah, you the off. You're running weed all over the place. Yikes. Hopefully all is all right with the grain cart. Sometimes these bolts can break on it, um, and that's a pretty typical thing, but anything else make us not have a grain cart. Mark, this trailer's out. It, he broke the window out of the trailer in the back. Ooh. That's not good broke the window out of the trailer in the back. Oh no. I'll be, I'll be up there in a minute. What do you mean broke the window out of the 
the trailer. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Is it running out? Oh, no. Darcy's got to tape the truck because it's running out. The wheat grain is running out, and that's never a good thing because, first of all, it's not good to have wheat kernels just laying yeah, around in the it. field. Yeah. And then it's also not good economically for the farm either. So this is going to be the last pass in this field. Well, actually, this half, then we'll start on the next half of the field because my uncle split them into two sections. So now I just made my turn and I'm starting on my last pass. Another method of harvesting wheat is to straight cut it and that means when the wheat's kind of already standing in the field as it grows, you just take your combine and it has little teeth that cut it off, lay it onto a belt that moves it into the center of the combine where it's thrashed so that the chaff comes off and then the wheat kernel is augered into the grain cart which is what we're harvesting. That method is a lot more efficient because you don't have to have swathers going through and pay an extra employee as well as fuel costs and the cost of running another piece of equipment that breaks down and requires maintenance. But then you may lose, you know, 50, 60, 70% of your crop to saw fly if you do decide to wait that long. So it really just depends. We typically swath all of our winter wheat, which is what we're harvesting right now, hard red winter and we usually will straight cut durum which is basically quite similar to wheat but it's used for pasta in the end then we also straight cut our barley which typically it's malt barley used for beer unless it doesn't meet the right specifications and then our barley will be used for pig feed or something like that and sold at a much lower price all of our crops are harvested at the same time of year end of July to August. So even though we say spring and winter wheat, it's really just a different crop variety that's all harvested at the same time. And the main difference is when you plant it. Spring wheat is planted in the spring, so it can't freeze after winter's kind of over, so around April, and harvested right now, and then, or in a couple of weeks. And then winter wheat is planted in the fall. So right after harvest, we'll begin thinking about seeding. And winter wheat needs to freeze in order to produce a head. And a head holds the grain kernels that we're looking to harvest. So that's a very, very crucial step in the process is the freezing of the winter wheat. But on the contrary, spring wheat can't freeze. And then barley is also planted in April in the spring alongside spring wheat. But then if I was to start on the next pass, we would need the grain cart operating fairly soon. So I might just go and see what's going on. So I'll finish up this row. So this is what happened to the truck. Your big door's open. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, I just saw it on your last pass. It might have come open as well. Gosh, it's windy. Now Trevor's shutting his door of his combine. Repping a Kate's Egg t-shirt. So now I rev the combine up so the auger will work in full swing. Now I'm headed over to the back to start filling it. Hopefully I'm still in the center. It doesn't look like the center to me. It looks like I'm too far over, but we'll see. I didn't load it super full in the front, but we can always go back and load it a little bit more. So now I waited until I cleared the truck to put my auger back because some trucks your auger doesn't clear. Trevor's doing a really good job on his first truck dump. And this is the field we're working in right now. This is the field we just finished, and then those are the 15 grain bins over there in the distance. Trevor just radioed and said his belt stopped working, but I figured it, be, it was because he got off the seat, because typically when I get off the seat, the whole header stop disengages as a safety feature, and then I have to shut the back off, the front off, and idle it down, but I guess he didn't get off the seat, so it's interesting why that happened, but it's working again, so we're all good. We're going by where my great-grandfather homesteaded in 1912 right now. That's the white grain elevator, which I've done a video on, actually. And the field right next to it's in Summer Fallow, but the field we're working in is right here. So very, very close. Now the grain cart driver's coming to pick me up. I'm pretty full as well. He just got done dumping Let's see how this goes. 
I'm only going 2.4. So it should be a good speed for him to be able to line up and us do an unload. Gotta get my radio just in case. A little bit faster. Just match my speed. Could you say that again? I just said match my speed, so a little tiny bit faster. A little bit faster. Tiny bit faster still. See how I'm outrunning you a little bit? You can slow down for a little bit, okay, you know. No, I know, but I'm going to, so I am. I, I did slow down. Okay, that's perfect. Awesome job. So it took a minute, but he lined up perfectly and we're doing a good on low. Good to go. Awesome, so that was a pretty okay grain cart dump. A little bit off at first, but we ended up figuring it out and that wasn't too bad at all. I think he wanted to stop. Want to go on road that third combine right now. But that was my Uncle Chris letting, letting him know to unload Copy. the other combine. But it ended up working out. I really wanted to do an unload on the go. I didn't want to have to stop again. So I just kind of wanted to work through it with him rather than just stop and say, you know, we're all good. But then Trevor, he has the hardest dump of all of them in the grain cart because three combine unloads will fill up the cart. So basically the other two don't really have to pay attention as, as to where the grain's falling out because they're not gonna fill it up. Whereas Trevor will probably fill up the front and either have to slow down a bit and kind of work um, the combine with the cart or move his auger back a little bit so that the grain puts it in a different spot in the cart and it doesn't overflow in one area and not the other. Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and